Hello students, in this video we'll give Niven's proof that pi is irrational. So we claim that pi is irrational. Suppose not. Then pi is equal to a over b, where a and b are integers. Like that, okay. Now the idea is to construct a function which is going to zero very, very fast. And so I'm going to symmetrize this. What we're going to do is we're going to define a function fn of x. And fn of x is going to be x to the power n. And then a minus bx to the power n over n factorial. Okay. Now the first thing we can observe is that if I write this like this, I can write this in the following way, I can write this as x to the n over n factorial, then I can binomial expand this, k goes from 0 to n of n choose k, and then I can have an a to the n minus k, and then a negative 1 to the k, b to the k, x to the k, like so. Now remember a and b are integers, and now the kicker is that what happens is that if I look at this n factorial and this n choose k, what that simplifies to, and this will simplify to the following, this is going to simplify to the sum k goes from 0 up to n, then this is the n factorial cancel again, 1 over n minus k factorial, k factorial, a to the n minus k, b to the k, negative 1 to the k, x to the n plus k, right? And now I can observe from this that th this function over here has a 0 of at least order n at the origin, right? So in other words, if I compute derivatives of this function, I know that f n k of 0 is going to be 0 if k is less than n or k is bigger than 2n because that's a polynomial degree 2n, right? Now if I do at least n derivatives of this thing, what will happen is I'm going to have an n factorial that comes down over here, so I'm going to have an n factorial, if I do n derivatives of this thing over here, I'm going to have a factor of x to the n plus k, at least x to the n factorial, so I'm going to have an n factorial at least, and that's going to turn into a combination. So this term over here, there's going to be no, no denominator, so it turns out that fn, fk of 0, is an integer when k is between at least n, n less than k, less than or equal to 2n. So we have integer values of the derivatives of this function, and now by symmetry, I can also notice, by symmetry, I notice that f of if I do a over b minus x, I shift it like so, then what will this be? This is going to be a over b minus x to the power n, and then a minus this expression, minus b times a over b x minus x to the power of n. So let's clear that out. Then up a minus b times a over b minus x to the power n over n factorial, like that. And what will happen over here is that I'm going to cancel out the x's over here. I'm going to have a b to the power n, x to the n, so I can pull that in over here, and we see that this is exactly equal to x to the n. That'll be an x to the n, and then a minus b x to the n over n factorial. In other words, it's symmetric over that line, and so that tells me that the value of the derivative of this function at b, a over b is also an integer. So in other words, we, all, we can also conclude from this that fk of a over b is an integer for k between 0, between n, and 2n, and then 0 else. Okay? Beautiful. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to construct a function, construct so the whole point is that the, all the derivatives of this function at either pi, which is a over b, or 0 are integers. Now construct the function f of x, which is fn of x minus fn double prime of x, uh, plus f four derivatives, 1, 2, 3, 4, n of x, all the way down to negative 1 to the n, and then f2n of x, fn2n of x, and then I can notice that if I did f capital double prime of x, if I did f capital double prime of x, that's going to shift everything over. So what will that be? This is going to turn into an fn double prime of x minus f quadruple prime of x all the way down to something that will cancel out with this over here. But of course, the n minus first guy is going to be an x to the 
n minus 1 fn 2n of x. And then the next derivative over there, since it's a polynomial of degree 2n, the next derivative is going to be 0. So it looks like if I take these things and add them together, what will we get? If I add these expressions together, so f double prime of x plus f of x is just fn of x. Okay? And so now the key is to do this. We're going to consider, if I look at f prime f prime cosine of x, then minus f prime f of x sine of x prime, what we get? We're going to get f double prime cosine of x, then minus f prime sine x, then minus, so I'm going to turn that into a plus actually, let's turn that into a plus over here, and then I'm going to have a plus f prime sine x, and then a plus f cosine of x. Okay? So what this becomes is this becomes, um, and actually let me change this a little bit. I'm going to turn those, into, those cosines into sines. Let's do this. I want to make this a little bit different. So let's do like this. Let's consider f prime x sine x minus f x cosine x prime. And let's see what we'll get over here. So we're going to get a, first thing, I'm going to get an f double prime sine of x. Then I'm going to get a plus f prime cosine of x. Then I'm going to get a minus f prime cosine of x. Then a plus f sine of x. So in other words, what this derivative is over here is this derivative is exactly equal to f capital. It's equal to sine of x. Those terms cancel out. So this is going to be sine of x times f plus f double prime. But f plus f double prime is fn. So this expression over here is just going to be fn sine x. Okay. So if I integrate fn sine x from 0 to pi, what we're going to get? fn x. And of course, these functions are non-negative, right? Between 0 and pi, these functions are non-negative, right? So these are non-negative times sine x dx. That's going to be greater than 0. And one thing it is, is it's going to be, um, well, it's going to be equal to, this integral over here is going to be equal to um, this function at, this function over here in the set of the derivative, at, evaluated between, um, so integral from 0 to pi of fn sine x dx is going to be equal to, when I, plug in pi, when I plug in pi to this, the sine of pi is going to be 0, and the cosine of pi is going to be negative 1, so that's going to be an f of pi, f of pi for the top limit. And when I plug in 0 to this, I'm going to have the sine of 0, which is 0, and the cosine of 0, which is going to be a 1, so it's going to be plus. So if I plug in 0 to this, what will we get? We'll get a 0 over here, because the sine of 0 is 0. And over here, we'll have an f of 0, and then a cosine of 0, which is equal to 1. So that's going to be an f of 0 on the bottom of this, so plus f of 0. Now, I know, I know that both f of pi and f of 0, by assumption, are integers. So this is an integer. This is an integer over here. But now, how fast these x, x's grow? Well, this function is symmetric about a over b. So we can see that this function fn is no more than pi, a, a multiple of pi to the n, and then a to the n, right? So this function over here. You can show this function. We can sort of see that how would we maximize this? We'd maximize this by plugging in the midpoint of those two points. Or so the maximum over here is comparable to what? So the maximum of f, the maximum of f of fn over n, the maximum over x of fn of x is no more than a to the power n, then pi to the power n over n factorial. So this. It can be made less than a to the n pi to the n over n factorial times a constant. And this, as n goes to infinity, can be made less than 1, less than 1 if n is large enough. And that's a contradiction, because this integral over here is an integer. It's an integer between 0 and a number less than 1 for n sufficiently large. Therefore, pi cannot be rational. Thank you very much.